So right here we got the genus uh, Palacurea. It used to be in Psychotria. It's Rubiaceae. It's the coffee family. The Synapomorphies of which are opposite leaves and interpetular stipules. But here you go. You got the uh, beautiful little uh, flowers, probably pollinated by God knows what, some sort of fly or uh, maybe a moth. Lots of members in a genus Palacurea. Lots of species in the genus Palacurea. And over here, growing in the cavity of this Massive uh, Pectinopetus stanley out of the podocarp. Actually, two two trees. Looks like this might be an oak, uh, which would make sense for the species of mushroom we're looking at. Growing right there in the cavity, we got a massive maitake mushroom. Graffola frondosa. I assume it's frondosa. I don't know. It might be a different species. We are at 9,300 feet in the cloud forest of central Costa Rica. But uh, it's a yeah, choice edible, but more interestingly is just the, the ecology of it. You can see the flies are liking it, too. And it's a beautiful goddamn fungus. Beautiful fruiting body of a fungus. But, you know, it's, if it's growing on this pectinopodes, it's kind of curious because they normally associate with oaks. They're not mycorrhizal, they're sap saprotrophic, but, uh, but it is, uh, you know, it's pretty unique. Mandy here studies, studies the genus Graffola and uh, was kind of blown away and asked me to come down here and look and see what species of tree we're looking at. Yeah, it does. It does look like it's growing on the uh, on the pectinopetus. Ooh, the flies! I wonder. I wonder if the flies are doing dispersal here. What a nice little elfin cavity. So, Mandy, tell us about this. What's going on? Yeah. So normally these grow with oaks in on the east coast of North America. I can harvest probably thousands of pounds of these in one year if I'm being very diligent about it. Um, I have never seen one on a tropical tree before, and I've never, I, I was shocked when I walked up to this, because I've never seen this outside of the east coast of the United States. So it, it might not be Griffola frondosa, it might be a different species. I know there's another one that was described from Chile, I don't know the name off the top of my head, but um, but yeah, this is a really special find, and these two trees are so entangled that we can't, we don't really know what, what it, it's it does off seem of. that that wood is that's podocarp wood that's pectinopodes. So, okay, yeah, that is kind of weird. Unless there's a you know an oak root going in there. I mean, yeah, you could see the trees are separated here. We got the oak on the right and a pectinopodus on the left. That's coming off the pectinopodus, it's coming off the, the heartwood of the podocarp. And some people argue about this, they say it's facultatively mycorrhizal, so it's mycorrhizal when it needs to be, and it's a saprobe when it. You know, when the once the tree is already dying, um, then it takes over and it, it can end up killing the tree, or the tree could be dying of other means, and then it could come in. But yeah, I, I've done a lot of <laughs> collecting of these on the east coast of North America, and I've just never seen this before. So you're noting the fungal affinities between uh, central highlands of Costa Rica at very high elevations, and uh, say the Appalachian Mountains. That's right, Appalachian Mountains are just you know, the, the mid-Atlantic in general, like Maryland and Pennsylvania, so many of the same genera down here as are up there, which is really cool and fun for me because that's where I kind of got my start mushroom hunting.